In the inception of the Tinubu administration, the aviation industry of Nigeria has witnessed tremendous changes and growth. Kotsi, of the current Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Keyamo. Currently, Nigerian boasts of about 2,133 licensed pilots, 1,659 aircraft maintenance engineers, 371 air traffic controllers, and 2,343 cabin crew licenses, among others. This sector has indeed experienced notable growth, especially with APC's recent inaugural flight to London Gatwick Airport in what seems a successful end to years of negotiations for the Nigerian privately owned airline to break into aviation's most profitable route. Further progressive growth include the partnership with Airbus, the European Multinational Aerospace Corporation, which says it is ready to work with Nigeria in raising the standard of air travel business in the country. This is sequel to a recent visit by Aviation and Aerospace Minister Festus Kiyamo to the company's facilities in Toulouse, France. However, stakeholders in the aviation industry are convinced that if the right policies are put in place to address growth challenges, the aviation industry will double its current workforce, generate more businesses, and increase the country's GDP. They insist that Nigeria's airports are not the best in terms of functionality, aesthetics, and modernity. That in many African countries, there's immediate access to the internet on arrival at their main airports, but no Nigerian international airport offers such free service effectively. Industry observers also noted that in terms of rating, Nigeria is rated low because of the long processing hours where passengers spend long time on queues on arrival. Joining us now on the morning show as we take a look at the state of Nigeria's aviation industry is Festus Keyamo, Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development of Nigeria. Good morning, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much for joining us on the morning show. Thank you for having me this morning. Well, two quick things. And a happy birthday to my brother Rufai. Yes. Today is his birthday. Yes. 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 He's away also for a few days. So. Okay. I'm sure we're going well, to eat pepper soup somewhere. Yes, you, you, I, like, you like pepper soup? Well, I, I, hope, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not absent to avoid implications. <laughs> but, but he's capable, I'm sure. Thank I'm you. Sure. When it comes back, the implications will be uh, provided. <laughs> because, uh, you know, birthdays are for implications. Absolutely. You know, pepper soup. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Anyway, quickly. Right. Two things. Yeah. The video that was shown there, yeah. uh, when you went to France, uh, Airbus and all that, for a moment, many Nigerians thought that uh, you had found a new job as a salesman <laughs> for Airbus. You know, instead of the people uh, receiving you, you were the one showcasing the uh, aircraft yeah. one after the other. We will need clarifications right. as regards that. Right. In terms of that, yeah. you know, uh, partnership with Airbus, that's one. Two, also... Uh, Airpiece, getting the London route, what transpired. Uh, Mr. Alan Oyema had been on this program. He was full of praise for you. When uh, uh, organized private sector went to have a iftar to breakfast with the president, he also spoke about you know, uh, the efforts that you made. But there are also challenges involved. People have expressed concerns about what uh, Mr. Oyema himself called uh, uh, international aero politics. So, we'd like you to address these two major issues. How you ended up as a salesman for Airbus and then Airpiece and the other issues that are there in the public domain. Thank you so much. Um, the, these issues are really intertwined. Um, as significant as this Airpiece issue um, is and the, the breakthrough um, into the London route, um, I, I do not want to dwell too much on it, but it, it, it shows our policy direction as a government. What we did with Airpiece and, of course, the Airbus issue. Um, it shows our policy direction, but with all the accolades coming in, I can tell you that it barely scratches the surface with the challenges we have in the aviation sector. That is why I think I don't want to dwell too much on it. Okay, fine, the accolades came in, but we need to also address 
frontally all the various challenges we have in industry. But let me tell you how these issues are intertwined. As a government, we set five priority areas for us when we came in, in the aviation sector. And I want you to, very, very, to follow this very well. And this highlights one of our priority areas. The first one, of course, is to ensure the safety of passengers, which is number one in the aviation sector. So a supervisor in the aviation sector, as what they call Aviator 001, I'm on top of the aviation sector in Nigeria, I must ensure the strict compliance with safety rules and regulations by the agencies who are involved. The second one, of course, is to improve our infrastructure. I'm going to come into the micro issues regarding all of this. Improve our infrastructure in terms of the fiscal buildings, the navigational equipment, and all of that. The third most important one, which is what we are coming to now, is to ensure that we support the growth and survival of our local operators. It has never been a focal point of various governments before now. They have left them to do their own thing. But I think we realize that with this president in office, <coughs> who has been a businessman, who knows about the ease of doing business, who knows about supporting you know, businesses, private businesses, for the job creation and for growth of the economy, we thought it was important to put as a focal point to support our local operators, uh, the growth and survival. And just to uh, use uh, 20 seconds to, to, to highlight that, in the last 40, 50 years, one of the highest mortality rates you have seen in businesses in the aviation sector. More than 100 airlines came and died in the last 40, 50 years, and I'm sure you know that. Yeah. From Concord to Zenit to Chan Changi, you know, on and on to Okada Airline. Whereas in other countries, you see airlines surviving 50 years. So we asked ourselves, what is the reason for this? Is it good for the economy? And then, of course, it comes with the attendant laws of jobs, too, when these airlines go under. Yes. And then you throw people, thousands of Nigerians, into the job market. So we thought that as a focal point, we should support the growth and the sustenance of local you know, operators, whilst, of course, holding them to the best international standards. You know, in doing so, and of course, the fourth and the fifth, you know, objective we set for ourselves was, of course, the training and retraining of our, you know, aviators across the country. That's the human capacity development, and of course, the last one is to raise revenues for the federal government. Uh, those are the five priority areas that we chose for ourselves. Now, regarding the third one, which is the growth and sustenance of our local operators. I asked myself when I came to office, I called everybody, consulted around the whole, you know, uh, the, the industry. You remember we had a retreat in Lagos, we had a retreat in Warri, we had, you know, with all stakeholders. And I discovered that the reason why we cannot compete with international airlines is that we don't have access to aircrafts on the same terms as the big, you know, the big uh, airlines around the world they, they have, the same terms. Because people don't know that the best airlines in the world, the biggest, call them Qatar, BA, um, Emirates, and all of them, KLM and all, they don't run their fleet, their 100% fleet, you know, uh, based on the um, actual purchase of the aircrafts. All the fleets you see, 80% of their fleet, in fact, recent study, uh, studies uh, show that 70% of the fleets across the world across all airline companies around the world, are on lease, on lease hold. They, you know, they are, they are on dry leases around the world. For those who have bank facilities, they have access to, the, to loans on single digits. Our banks are doing 26%. And there's also, of course, you know, a doubt whether our, our banks are big enough and not to finance those type of aircrafts. You know, you know the, the big bodies, the wide bodies that fly international routes and, and, and all of that. So I now said, okay, fine. I called the industry people. So in order for you to survive, you must also have access to these aircraft. So I want you to follow these arguments. For you have access to these aircraft as much as all of these you know, airlines around the world. I said, I'll help you. Because government's duty is not to actually give monies to people, but to create the enabling environment. That is what government is all about. Create the environment for private businesses to survive. I, I, I went around, I said, look, what guides aircraft leasing across the world? 
I discovered that it's what's called the Cape Town Convention. The Cape Town Convention is a convention that regulates aircraft leasing across the world. And Nigeria is a signatory to that convention. And we have not only signed it, we have ratified that convention. So, and there's a group that is responsible for pushing for the, you know, observance of that convention, compliance with that convention. That group is co-chaired by Airbus and Boeing. That group is called the Aviation Working Group. It is um, headed by my very good friend. I've known, I've come to interact so much with him, John Wool or so. Now, I called John Wool. I called all of them, the Aviation Working Group. We held a meeting. I said, why have you blacklisted Nigerians? Why are we not getting these aircrafts? Our local operators like Airpeace, like, uh, you know, Bomb Air, like United. Why? They said, we have blacklisted Nigeria because Nigeria does not comply with the Cape Town Convention. Now, let me explain why this is a problem and why they came to me quite early, being a lawyer. They said, it's a legal problem. They bring their aircraft into Nigeria on, lease, on dry lease, not on ACMI, on dry lease. Our local, I'm sorry to say, I apologize, but on scrupulous private businessmen, take their aircrafts, refuse to fulfill their obligations under those dry leases, and guess what? They rush to court and get an injunction to stop the removal of those aircraft from Nigeria. It happened with a previous airline, I don't want to mention the name, yeah. some 10 years ago, yeah. and it gave Nigeria a bad image. And so they told me, the Aviation Working Group, until you amend your laws, until you amend your practice directions in court, to outlaw, I repeat, to outlaw the granting of injunctions for the removal of aircrafts on dry lease, we will not bring aircraft into your country. And it affected the whole of the business. Of I need to conclude right. this. It's very important for me. Just right. allow me flow. Because it's, it, it, the whole world is listening. Aircraft losers are listening to this. And it's a policy issue I'm talking about. I want to assure them that they can now come into Nigeria. Brilliant. So I said, okay, fine. I'll do this for you. Because I'm, I'm a lawyer. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a member of the inner bar. So this is my field. I will do it for you. So I engaged the Attorney General of the Federation. I spoke with the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court. We are engaging the Chief Justice of Nigeria. All of them have agreed. I briefed Mr. President, I briefed Mr. Vice President, who is the head of the you know, ease of doing business, because it affects the ease of doing business. And all of us have agreed that it's a critical issue. And as I speak with you, we're in the process of drafting a practice direction to satisfy the world group, the aviation working group, that once we give this practice direction, and the practice direction says, please, our judges, I beg you, don't grant injunctions to detain aircraft that are on dry lease in Nigeria. It gives us a bad image. It's against the aviation working, it's against the Cape Town Convention. There's another pro provision there that says if you want to go administratively to take your aircraft out, apply to the NCAA, which I supervise, and within five days, within five days, the NCAA must grant relief. Right. The other law says also that within 10 days, the courts must grant relief also to creditors who want to take their aircraft right. out. So, so we're working on that. You're working, so we're uh, almost uh, there. So where are you on that now? Just to give a summary. So you've explained yeah. the process, yes. which is very important. Yes. And you've talked about the fact that you've approached you know, um, the judiciary, spoken to a few people, yes. key stakeholders. Yes. So where are we now? They are all well agreed. We are now? working on that now. Okay. We are almost done with that to right. assure international creditors and leasers that they can bring their aircraft and here. And watching. I know now, they're watching. So, so let me let me come to um, some that, of the So I had to now engage on diplomatic shuttle right. to the aircraft manufacturers yes. and the leasers. Okay. Why must you go to the aircraft manufacturer? This is why I'm tying so it in now. I'm tying it into Airpeace and Airbus. I want to ask a question around France. Yes. Because Dr. Bati had asked you with regards yes. to that video that was trending. Yes. And even though you'd gone there on a mission to seek private sector investors, it seemed like the purpose was lost because people saw more of you. No, no, no. Sort it's of all, it's all mischief. So, no, let me, no, let me no, come no, to the no, end I'm, of that. I'm coming. I'll, handle, okay. I'll ask you that question. Yeah. So with regards to that, what are some of the tangible results from that trip to France? Because that's what we want to focus on. No. Not like you mentioned, some of the mischief makers. And, and just one second. Yeah. So beyond that, there are other issues, challenges plaguing the aviation sector. And we have so many things, a, a number of things to touch on. So I'd love for you to keep your um, responses concise. 
One of the things we'll talk about is even the, the, some of the challenges that Airpiece in the weekend of its operation had cited, even amongst local players. So yes, we're talking about the fact that it's a bad, it's bad imagery, you know, what you've explained with regards to the, um, defaulting, dry leases, giving an injunction to keep it in. But how about our own you know, internal saboteurs, especially as it's with regards to local players and how they've made life difficult for running business in this sector in Nigeria. What are you doing about that? I, I told them not under my watch. When I came in and I saw all the ruts in some sectors, especially within, like, you know, um, Oyama mentioned, um, our own, you know, um, bureaucracy. Yes. And I said, look, not under my watch. I read the Riot Act to all of them. And I said, look, this is key to the survival of private but businesses. But they're still doing it. You read no, the Riot Act. But, but you can see that, first of all, we pushed through to make this possible. Yes. The buses are negotiated by Nigeria. So the buses are owned not by private businesses. We give the routes out to them because the private businesses don't negotiate these routes. They don't own them. It's Nigeria that owns these buses. So we now give it to our private people to say, look, you take this route because we have a right over these routes. Even what they have done to Epis, when I came and I saw that Epis was struggling, they have been struggling before I came in. And I said, look, this is one of our objectives support private businesses. I called Mr. Oyema and said, what can we do? He told me all his problems. And I said, look, you know what? Let's, let's start on this. I wrote a very stern letter to the, the transport minister in, in the UK. And I said, under our BASA, we will not allow this co to, to continue. If you give us 21, you are taking 21 slots from Nigeria, we deserve 21 slots too. The 21 slot is that British Airways is doing seven slots to Lagos every day, seven slots to Abuja every day, and of course uh, Virgin is doing seven slots to Lagos every day, which is 21 slots. So we deserve 21 slots. But guess what? What they even did to Airpiece yeah. is even below the standard of the BASA we have, because the BASA not only talk about the reciprocity regarding the slots, it's also talked about the, the airports you also arrive at. So we are giving you our like tier one airport, our major airport, which is M Motala Mohammed International Airport, it's our star, you know, our star airport. Yes. You should give us also Heathrow. And so I met that issue also, and we kept back and forth. At the point they said, bring a huge amount before we can allow you to Heathrow, because they gave, they gave the excuse that they had given Heathrow out to private concessionaires. So the British government said, we are no longer in control of Heathrow. So we cannot give you Heathrow. So we went back and forth. I said, I told them, I said, you know what? Let us start with Gatwick. They said we'll divert to Gatwick. Let's start with Gatwick. And then they started giving us all kinds of times, uh, flying by 3 a.m. in the morning and all those, you know, inconvenient times. We went back again to London. I traveled again to London. I will put our foot on the ground before we were able to, you know, uh, eke out, you know, what yeah. we have okay, now. Okay, so it's not just about so, airpiece. I hope you, I mean, it's, so, they're just the example. It's for other yes, aviation It's for everybody, players, for yes, everybody. To support it's, it's to local support, support local well, operators. Well, let me ask you about the investment in France, because that's yes. an important one. So yes. what were some of the wins from that trip to France? I know now, you talked about the conversations, but what sort of investment did you attract into the, the aviation this is This is exactly where it ties in now. You've come to the point where it ties in with the airpiece and what we're doing. Okay. The Manufacturing companies, Airbus and Boeing, they are in charge of, and they have a network of all the lizards across the world, the aircraft lizards. You know what happens is that, I'll explain this a bit, the aircraft leasing companies take aircraft from them. They, 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 they book aircraft long ahead of time. For instance, if you want to get an aircraft now, you book, buy, you want to buy outright, you may have to be on the queue for 10 years to get one from Boeing or Airbus. So what aircraft leasers do is that they have in their financiers, they have the they have their financiers or they have the money, they book in advance for this aircraft. So they have it ready. They may if you want to go through leasing companies, you may get it in one year because they already booked in advance. Do you understand me? Yeah. So the Boeing and Airbus, they have a network of these leasers across the world. They are the ones who rally them to say, look, Nigeria is a destination. Hey, let's go there. So you need to attack these leasing, these manufacturers, aircraft manufacturers. So when I arrived in Toulouse, guess what? They were all there to meet us. And they said, look, Nigeria, has it changed? They were asking us. Oga oh, Ruben, they said, Nigeria, have you changed? I said, yes, we have. This is government here. This is the minister here. They had never seen it before because they were living, pri living private people like Airpiece, like Ibom, to go there and struggle and convince them to give them aircrafts. So they said, oh, government is now ready. I said, yes, I'll give you guarantees. 
Bring any paper. I will sign that your aircraft are safe here. Bring them in. You will take them out when they are when there is a default. Okay, and it happened last week. Let me just tell you. I want to tell my friends in the industry that I apologize to them. But under my watch, you will not detain any aircraft. You will not breach any agreement because it gives the industry a bad name. It happened two, three weeks ago. A very good friend of mine. I'm sorry. They came for his aircraft. It was under a wet lease. They were doing all kinds of legal gymnastics. I said, look, I'm a senior. Don't tell me about those legal gymnastics. Take this aircraft out. Minister. Uh, okay. So they took the aircraft out. Beyond, so, beyond policy. Yes. Let's talk about certain practical details. Yes. When you assumed office, after that meeting with President Tinubu, yes. you were very strong on KPIs. Yes. When the president said KPIs will be a priority for the ministerial uh, appointees, you went back to the agency. The newspapers reported that you read the riot act to these uh, aviation agencies. That look, if you don't perform before President Tinubu removes me, I will get rid of you people. Now, I hope you are aware of uh, a class action notice by certain concerned citizens, Margaret Adeyi Laka and others, who are saying that FAN and uh, NCA. They collect uh, money from people on tickets, and yet there is no performance at the airport. No, the toilets are not working. The carousel is not working. The air conditioning is not working. They didn't mention you there. They just sued the uh, FAN and uh, NCAA. So why is it that in terms of KPI, the, uh, the uh, Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace Development, cannot provide simple AC in our airports. At least I know that of uh, Montala Mohammed uh, Airport that is always hot. The second thing is that in December 2023, you said that these airlines, domestic airlines, that cancel flights, that delay flights, that they will be named and shamed, and they will have to pay compensation to Nigerian uh, passengers. That has not happened. December to April, that, that's been quite some time. Did you just say that at that time, you know, without putting a structure in place to make sure that uh, customer's interest is protected? Because they are still delaying flights. They are still uh, canceling flights. Nigerian passengers are still in trouble. So these are practical things that affect Nigerian travelers. Why is it that your ministry just talks the uh, talk and you don't walk the talk? Thank you. Are you this two two in one? You must allow me just separate them so I don't I don't get you know lost in my train of thoughts. The first one regarding the infrastructure of at the airports, which has which actually enhances customer experience, the toilets, the carousels, the chillers, and all of that. There is a sickening bureaucracy on the ground that I met as minister, and that all you know it has been there over the years. I apologize to say this, but I have to be hard on the bureaucracy on the ground. When these things go bad, because they, they use them so often, and the process by which these things are repaired, and all of that. Now, the bureaucracy, I said the sickening bureaucracy, is that if, if, and, you know, a lift breaks down. Uh, they, are, they are raising a file, they are raising a memo. They are moving it from one table to the other. Director of this science, director of that science. They are taking it to the PTB. They are bringing it up to the mini. All that takes weeks, the bureaucracy. And customers are shouting. Customers are screaming and all of that. And say, look, why all of this bureaucracy goes on? Service providers have not been paid ahead of time. Those who are supposed to be, you know, quickly come and repair these issues and all of that. And I told myself when I came in, and I want to tell you what we are doing about this. I told myself that it's not possible for me to leave this in the hands of a bureaucrat. It's not going to, it's not going to work. And in the process, in the past, I'm not going to indict any particular person. As this thing is going from table to table, they are trying to fix this. Somebody is one person is putting his own money on top. This one say, add my own. This one say, add my own. I am sorry, but it is, we have to be honest about what happens in the system. And I say, it's not going to work. At the end of the day, the person who provides this thing now does it when, when, when he has, he has, gone through so much in the system. He leaves very little for him to work. He brings substandard equipment. In the next one month, it breaks down again. What do we do about this? We need to bring in private sector to run these things for us. It's not possible that we run it in the, with a bureaucrat. It's not going to work. If we bring a new thing, new equipment in, they're going to break down. 
and it's going to take all of this moving file from here to here to here to fix again. So we decided to start working with the, with the private sector. In fact, that was, we had gone far, and you know, this is regrettable with Herbert Wigwe before he died. That was the last meeting I held with him because Assess and um, Wigwe University were coming in as the first people who contacted, because he's, he was talking to me about adverts all over the, you know, uh, Port Harcourt Airport for the Wigwe University. And I called him one and I said, look, it goes beyond adverts. Let's do this because let's use it as a contact point for the private sector we want to bring it to the different airports. You run your, your different branches of assets very well every day. The chillers are working, your receptions are working, you know, very cool receptions, lifts and all that. Come and replicate this for us. In, in exchange, instead, because like you said, it ties into your second question. The money we take from these adverts, they still embezzle them anyway. So I'll better exchange value for service. Instead of me to collect this money from these adverts, we are collecting money from them, use it for useless things, for embezzlement, for training that are not working and all that. Thank God the president stopped international trips. Because every week I see file on me training thousands of dollars and all that going out. I was concerned about it before the president stopped it. Now, I said, there's no point collecting money for all these adverts. Let me exchange it for service. So look, how about maintain the chillers for you are spot on about it. These are the five, four. Key things about customer experience, the toilets. I don't want to see uh, tie, ties from uh, local factories here, those old ties. Get me marble tie, marble on the wall. World-class toilet seats that we see all over the world. Maintain the chillers, maintain the carousels, maintain the lifts for me. Three, four years, then in exchange, put your adverts everywhere. He also asked for, you know, uh, uh, Lagos. He said, oh, put that, said, okay, I'll use Wigwe Invest with Placot. Uh, Please give me Lego. I'll do it for you. We we were laughing. We signed. He said, "Look, I'll go to the America and come back, and we'll, we'll conclude." And then he didn't come back. But then, luckily enough, we are still talking with them. They want to revive the project. So I'm just telling you my vision for that. To answer you, it's not going to be a quick fix like this. But I needed to think outside the box to say, if we don't bring in, remove the bureaucracy from this, and make sure that it is like. In a quick reaction to some of these things that break down every day, it's not going to work. The issue of Wi-Fi, I met Wi-Fi at the airport. I met the problem of Wi-Fi. What did I meet at the ground? Two agencies were, 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 were struggling over who provides Wi-Fi. Fans said it's their duty. Nama says it's their duty. And this argument was going on before I came to office. And so nothing was working. Fan says they are the ones who provide, they are the owner. You know, Fan is the owner of the airport. They are the landlords. And so it's part of their infrastructure. Nama says they are the ones who provide communication and uh, equipment and all that. So Wi-Fi falls under communication. And Wi-Fi, Fan says no, it falls under assets, part of the assets of, I said, look, you know what? Take this and give to Nama. So I, make a, I made a decisive you know, uh, decision. So Nama has taken over Wi-Fi. You will see Wi-Fi very soon and all the airports. So it is now the responsibility of Nama and guess what? The Minister of Communications has also written to me, and through their agency, they now want to provide complementary Wi-Fi. So I had to contact the Minister of Communication that, look, we need to do this at our airport. So right. we are going to have that very soon. But one more thing, too, over okay. Wi-Fi. Right. We have also contacted some international companies. We are talking with them. We want to provide Wi-Fi on board. Actually, let us chat. We cannot stream, but local we can chat flight. local, local flights. Right. We do, they have it everywhere in the world. Why yeah. can't we aspire to have? So we are working on having Wi-Fi on board too. And we have gone far with that. We want, um, uh, communic the Ministry of Communication, they want to give us a three months trial first. We use their satellites okay. to do it for the first three months free. Right. And then we will try it. Then the delay, of flights. delay, I said that's why I don't want to be lost in thought. There are two questions in one. We have gone far with an insurance company right now. I said we are going to work with insurance companies. All over the, first of all, let me tell you that it's not true that anything is not happening. There are a lot of reforms happening every single day from the customer consumer department of NCA. So we can reel out a lot of people who have gotten refunds every day and apologies and refunds. So they refund I them. Haven't gotten but any then, refund apology. Uh, they are, they are they holding you? Any, are they holding any money? Yes, so and bring, your, bring your bring your Maybe, maybe, in, maybe bring in your, in bring, your yes. statement, just share with us how people can we can Go, just get, get in refunds. touch what with the cost consumer department. The Director of Consumer Protection or NCAA, yes, NCA. Okay. NCA. It's NCA, not the ministry. Okay. NCA, there's the Director of Consumer Protection. Some of there's these a lot NCAA of... officials, they are probably consultants to the airlines. No, 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 but not, not under anything. my watch. And I that's why I changed personnel. Dr. So, Abati. So I change e personnel, so it is so good now. Just go and hear what is happening in that so department. So send an email to NCAA. Yes. If they don't respond, what happens? So Talk for instance, to me. Like the bank Talk to me. 
How would they talk to you? How would like how you an ordinary Nigerian? How bad? Am I not tweet, ordinary? Would they tweet at you? Yeah, how would how they meant to get in touch with you? Put it out there, tag me. I will re react. Okay. So hold I mean, you I accountable will. to hold that. Hold me, but me. I, but I don't think it's. I a, want to take responsibility. I don't think it's a job for one man. If you understand no, the number on. of I'll, cancellations I'll or delays yes. that happen, but the consumer department has a large. It's a large department. Okay. It's different sections, people take care of a different complaints every day. It's working. I can assure you that department is working. Well, beyond address? that, What's the beyond that, um, I'll get it right because I'm not, I'm not in my head right now. But I can get it and, and, and send it to you and you can broadcast it. But there are jingles. They just did a jingle now for the first time in history. It's not on a rise, so you have to bring it on a rise. Right? Well, okay, yeah. So we'll put it on a rise. Right. If so we can we even can... get it before we finish, they play it on this Fantastic. thing about consumer protection. Okay. Uh, you know, the pigeon English. When they delay your flight, so don't fight and all that and all that. We've done that. The jingle just came out last week, and they put in some radio stations. Well, so we are we are pushing for for that. Know. And there's an insurance company we're talking about to, to now. We've gone far with that about not just refund but compensation. And for those whose flights are cancelled in areas where they cannot get flights that day, whether they can even get a hotel for them immediately before the airlines react, the insurance will take care of it. We have gone far with that, the insurance companies, and we're about you know to sort that okay, issue out. Know, May right twenty nine is almost here. Yes. The uh, Tinubu administration will have to tell us what he's been able to do in one year. Yeah. So there are certain low-hanging fruits. You complain about bureaucracy. Look, before May 29, if it means the minister going physically to Alaba to go and buy chillers and look for contractors to come and, you know, install... Uh, the chillers and you supervise it at least as an interim. Uh, Remember, I think as a proof for me to change the chillers at the international airport to buy new ones instead of repairing, repairing, and they use it as a as a what's it called daily bread. Yeah. Every one month they repair every one. Month. So last two weeks, Mr. President graciously, as head of uh, chairman of X, said we should change, buy new ones okay. altogether instead of repairing. So we have the approval already. We're about to start doing that. At the Lagos yeah, International but you should Airport. get involved yeah. yourself. Oh, if yes, it, I know. If it means going to the market. I know. To buy the chillers and install. Dr. Abati. direct labor. Dr. Abati. Yes. My major concern coming to office to leave a legacy. I've done all before. Okay. As a but private person. Let me ask you. Person. Nigeria Air. Yes. You complained about it. You said, although you were part of the administration that worked on the Nigeria Air project. You said, oh, this was just Ethiopian airline flying uh, Nigeria's uh, flag, a flag carrier, and you were, you were going to work on having a national carrier. And you talked about a probe that EFCC will carry out some probes. Where are we with that project, Nigeria Air? Still where we are. We are Suspense, where were we? Su suspended, waiting for further directives from Mr. President. The President will give a final direct on where we are going on that, but I don't have powers to do that. But we needed to do that because, like I said, we met plenty of complaints when we came in as a government. And like I said, it would have been irresponsible for us as government to come in and see so much of those complaints. Like I said, even the, the parliament, you remember the parliament set up a probe, and I'm not judgmental here, set up a probe and called it all kinds of names and all of that. I said, okay, that was the point at which we came in. So it was only reasonable for us to say, you know what, hey, suspend this thing. Let's look at it again, the processes they went through. Um, the other time I said, it's not me that initiated it. Before I came, the EFCC is also looking at it. There's a probe, I can confirm there's a probe of EFCC going on. And we cannot be ahead of that probe. We have to also wait for that to conclude. And Mr. President will give a final directive on that. That is his prerogative, not mine. Okay, I have questions around timelines and then another question around repatriation of funds. So let me just ask you. With regards to timelines, this issue around these chillers, efficiencies in our airports because this is i mean years and years um coming when do you think you know this new uh, uh, conversation you're having with access which is fantastic by the way i hope you will see the day of light when will this when can nigerians begin give us, to give see us, give us one year so i've between, been in office for six months seven. give us one year nigerians will be proud of what we see so 8th of april 2025 we will hold you to account. Give what me one of year, one things? year. Give us one year from now. Nigerians will be proud of the airport. Of, so of, of what we see at the airport. So I also like you to give us a timeline of the Nigeria Air because it cannot just be in limbo. A lot of investigations just end there. Investigations, announcements around oh, one uh, ministry or one the um, Senate is handling it or something. But when give us a timeline? Because it's not by prerogative to give final directive on that. So yes. I can't give. No, a just just a bit of. I mean, what, it's not by prerogative. Okay. Give, right. It's not my prerogative. Fair enough. Now, let me ask about repatriation of funds. Um, the 
I need to say, say something quickly okay. because because you know, of industry wide people watching it. When I talked about um, uh, leasing of aircrafts and all that, it's also important to tell you that going along with that, with the Airbus discussion and all that, is about the establishment of MROs in Nigeria. It's very important to also mention that before I finish this interview, that it's not about leasing of the aircraft. You lose the aircraft and they cannot maintain the aircraft within Nigeria. Where do we go from there? We have to source for foreign currency again, foreign exchange to take our aircrafts out yeah. for normal ABC checks. So part of the discussion is that, look, come and establish MROs in Nigeria. Guess what? In the whole of West Africa and Central Africa, there are no MROs for, for wide bodies. Okay, we have for helicopters and small bodies, but for wide bodies, we have no MROs. And that is key to also preserving our foreign exchange. Because we seek for foreign exchange, because you just talked about you know, yes. foreign, current, foreign exchange. We seek for foreign exchange all the time to go and do simple checks, to change boats, to do this on our aircraft. We go fly them out to foreign facilities to try to, you know, and that is putting pressure on the Naira. All right, so let's so talk about that. We so are working on that too. But guess what? Let me just tell you that. I, maybe I let this cut out of the bag. It's not just Airbus. Boeing, we have gone far with Boeing. Boeing, and, that they are, uh, those are flying off <laughs> well, but they are the two engines biggest, are collapsing. Well, they are the two biggest uh, you know, manufacturers in the world. How far are you going with Boeing? We have an MOU on the table that I just even, so we'll be announcing the sign of an MOU very soon. With okay. Boeing, so you, so people propose to think that oh we are dealing with this and we're not dealing with that. It's not true. Boeing is even pushing and pushing. So we have been able to create this competitive environment, and that is the advantage we are getting. Whereas we are even spoiled for choice on that now. It all sounds great. What we want is you know they say the taste of the pudding is in the eating. No, so it's, it sounds because be you must have a vision to okay. tell you to do that. Absolutely. We are not we are not modeled up. Our vision is not modeled. Up. We are clear as to where we are going as right. a government. We're very clear. Okay, about so let me ask the question around repatriation of funds. Yes. The conversation is that, I mean, you know, a number of airlines, Emirates being one of them, Etihad the other, left, um, you know, stopped flying into Nigeria because of one of the reasons is this issue around repatriation of funds. And also it's been said to have an impact on the cost of flights in terms of the fact that the government doesn't honor its commitment to repatriation of funds. Where are we on that? Have you been able to clear off the backlogs? And if that's the case, then how about conversations? Have you begun to reopen conversations with the Dubai government, Emirates? Because that was also an embarrassment to this administration. The fact that there was an announcement that they had opened up, um, I mean, it's both the foreign, um, the, the foreign office and your service because of the aircraft um, coming back into Nigeria. But then that happened to be false news or fake news. We are not yet, we haven't yet opened up that conversation. Where are we on that particular conversation? But the first thing is that, where are we first on repatriation of funds? Have you, have you been able to clear the backlogs to restore confidence in these airlines coming back and also reviewing their flight tickets? And also that conversation with Emirates, Etihad, the Dubai government, where are we on that? Just a quick one before I answer. It wasn't fake news, it was hasty news. Oh, so <laughs> is it, was it, was it, it real? It was not fake news, it was hasty news. Uh, almost a year later, nothing it's has happened. No, not a year. It was October. I, yeah, was well, I, I didn't say yes. Yeah, Come on. on. But you said a year. So, 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 so it was, <laughs> so it was, if it was hasty, was hasty it means that it's still going to happen. It's almost happening. When? Everything now. is almost. No, I'm just telling you that. <laughs> right. Okay, I can't show it on air. I just got a letter from Emirates. Okay. So the letter is on my phone now. And what's the content of the letter? They thanking, can just be thanking us for you. going through all the gamut and they're ready to come back. When are they ready so to they come will back? So they will announce the dates because, you know, to restart a route, you have to get the aircraft on that route and all that. So I'm announcing for the first time to Nigerians that I just received the letter from Emirates now. The letter is with me. I have a hard copy too. Thanking for all the efforts we made. And Mr. President was the showman here. He was the one that pushed and pushed for it. He made my job easy because he went down the diplomatic shuttle and all of So it took time to dot the T's and cross the I's and all that. That's why I say it was hasty news, not fake news. So just hasty. They will now announce the date of their first flight. But I have received a letter confirming that all the issues have been resolved. They are prepared to start coming back. I that mean, letter is with me. Timeline. So now, it's June, July. It may, be, it may be before June. Before it's, June. Uh, definitely before the summer. Okay. Okay. They will announce the date. But we have not answered the question. Yes, the repatriation of funds. The repatriation of funds is that there were two sets of funds that were trapped. So people got it confused when they said, oh, this was fake news. They said they have cleared. Yeah. Other people said they have not cleared. I'm sure you heard that. Yes. There were the funds that were trapped by the CBN, and that is the ones that, uh, I think they called the forward sales or so, that forward. they had bidded for. But the CBN had not been able to meet its obligation. But they, they bidded for it. The CBN accepted the bids, but said they couldn't provide the funds for it. That one amounted to about $160 million. 
That is the government's own obligation. We have cleared it. So when government say they have cleared the obligation, they are talking about the ones that CBN has responsibility in respect of. They have cleared those ones. The other ones are for the commercial banks. The commercial banks, the, the way they sell their tickets, their funds are trapped in commercial banks. The commercial bank cannot raise the FX to fund and, and, and transfer to them. So that is not government's responsibility. It's for the commercial banks. To, they call it one window, Nantep window or something, to raise those funds and transfer those funds. So that is not government. That is where the confusion came in. But government's own responsibility regarding the central bank, they have cleared 100% all the trap funds. Okay. We've been talking lightly about aviation. Facilities, leases, dry leases, you know, diplomatic shuttles, and all of that. There's also you know, another aspect of your title. Aerospace development. There was even a report saying we now have an aerospace uh, university. I think you once Absolutely. went to inspect the facilities. Absolutely. Now tell us about this aerospace development because, look, once upon a time in this country, there was talk about, oh, uh, Nigeria will be an aviation hub. Uh, there was something they called the Aeropolis and all that that one minister before you wanted to do. That has not happened. So could you just tell us what you are doing in that other regard. Fantastic. Aerospace development. It means that it's not going to space. People have been confusing it. That is under the Ministry of Science and Technology. The space is shuttle. We're talking about not just the runways and the terminal buildings this time, but developing the entire ecosystem around the airports. Modern airports go beyond runways and terminal buildings, which is what has been happening over the years. Our development of airports have been runways, terminal buildings, the process you go back, you go into the town. Now, the modern airports around the world, you have air transport colliding with land transport. So rails must come into the airports. Rail must come in, land transport will come in, and then the air transport. It makes for passenger express. So up to the, to the point you, you land from the airport, till the time you get to your bedroom, it becomes seamless. You don't struggle because all the transportation and all the transit points become easy. The other one is to transit you from one wing to the other for international travels. Now, what we met on the ground is that we don't have master plans to develop aerotropolis and you know, a total ecosystem for our airports. We have been developing our airports in fits and starts. So when somebody comes and says, I want to do this at the airport, I want to do a fire station, I want to do this, they just said, anywhere that's available at the airport, go and do it. In fact, in Abuja now, they had to demolish a fire station or something because it was disturbing one tower or so that they were building. You know, that, it was, you know uh, the, 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 the new terminal in Lagos, we are facing problems with this, you know that. Yeah. Because they build a new terminal, the big bodies cannot come into anchor yeah. because two hangars are blocking where they... So these are the type of problems and good you know, credit to you, the question you asked. What are we doing about this? So the first thing I did was I, hey, halt all developments. Let's do a master plan quickly, quickly for the five international. We're going to do for all of them. So in this year's budget, Luckily, you know, the National Assembly and their committees on aviation, extremely helpful people and supportive, they, they saw my point and approved for us a budget on master plans, Dr. Abati. So we now have a budget on, to develop the aerospace, the total aerospace. So if we have 30,000 hectares of land, for instance, and we, had already, we have already used only 5,000 to develop uh, what we have now, which is virtually what we have in all the international airport with lots of bushes and all that around. We want to do a 30-year master plan with phases, phase one, phase two. Where will, the, where will the conference center be later? Where will the five-star international airports, uh, five-star hotels be later? Where will the MRO facilities, because all of them must carry MRO facilities, where will they be later? All of this must be in a total master plan, in a total aerospace. And so once we do that, we will now call concessionaires, call them and say, look, this is our plan. We are selling our vision to you. You are not coming to build anything for us as you like. No. If even though you're a concessionaire, you don't come and say you just build anything. We say, we have a plan. Follow this plan. You want to start with the five-star hotels? Fine. Do you want to start with a two, three, four wing of an airport? Fine. Because so that we can process passengers. We cannot process passengers as they are now. We cannot. You know, Ibom is doing something beautiful, but they've not finished it. And that's a support I'm also giving to a local airline. Ibom is doing a proper hub 
in, 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 uh, in Uyo. I went there, beautiful place they're doing, and they will soon finish, yes. where they can transit passengers to, to Central Africa and West Africa and challenge uh, you know, airlines like Askai and all of that who are, have mon monopoly on those routes. Yes. So apart from airplanes, we are supporting another one to, to break those monopoly on the West African and Central African route right now. And very soon you'll see that happen. So we are, we are developing that, uh, Dr. Bati. Credit to you for that question. And very soon we are consulting you know, uh, world-class consultants. We are going around the world. The best design consultants must come and help us design these airports. Get us this you know, plans, and then from then on, we now begin to develop our airports in phases. But why that is going on, those are a bit long-term plans. The short-term plans, low-hanging fruits, we are not going to wait forever, is that, it's what I talked before, we are going to repair our facilities, maintain those facilities of the existing ones, so that passengers can have you know, good experiences. All right, let me talk about one of your pillars, training and retraining of aviators yes. as your aviator 001, yes. 001, Correct. as you mentioned. But beyond the aviators, it's also even just training and retraining of your key staff members at the airport. From a consumer perspective, when you go to the airport, one of the complaints is that there's no training. It almost seems as if the staff members there from all you know, the stakeholders are unable to deal with customers. Number one, the long queues. Number two, I mean, there was a footage there where you see them opening bags, very, very, almost colloquial, very ancient, not advanced at all. And then the lack of use of technology. We can't be at this level as the giant of Africa, still be manually operating almost everything. You want to complete a form, you write. Forms, I don't even know where they're going to at the end of the day. How do you want to introduce the use of technology now, at our now, now everybody blames us on that. Unfortunately, people model things up. That's not our duty. It's immigration. It's, it's internal affairs. It's, uh, it's, uh, but it's under, it, but it no, stops your work it's from... It's no, hold on. Whatever you need hold to... On. See, no, no, let me, let me just finish. No, let me just of finish. Of their territories. No, let me just finish. So, right. uh, for the ease of business um, um, committee, the ease of business, ease of doing business um, um, co committee, you're all on that platform. You're all on that board. We don't want to hear about whether it's immigration, is this. What we see is that we go to the airport, we have a bad experience. It's under your purview. So if you need to take your phone and call the minister or the um, minister of interior, I say, let's sort out this issue. That's what Nigerians want to You are not going to allow me to conclude. Uh, no, you will conclude. Yeah, I just want to, to say that. Don't that. blame them I'm just them allowed you. I'm no, no, you, I'm just telling you that people are very protective of the territories in government. I, for example, cannot take a proactive step and say, now we need to do this, stop this. This agency live here. This agency live here. But... Under the National Security Advisor, we have gone found that now. I just want, I've, I want to, first of all, establish the fact that you don't point at Minister of Aviation all the time, everything at the airport. There are a lot of agencies at the airport. It's not, yes. it's not under my purview. I cannot, I cannot remove the, you know, NDLA, EFCC, yeah. customs, immigration, all dipping their hands in your bags. They will tell me, say, hey, we are doing our job. We are security. We are here. We are like, so it is, there are people who are in charge of them. We are just the landlords at the airport. But it's one government. There is... Like I said, the ease of doing business, we're all there under the vice president. We mentioned this thing earlier. My, my brother, uh, the Minister of Interior, I know he's doing so much on that now in terms of automating the process to make it faster. We spoke about it. We're cooperating on that. And there's an, an overlap on that regarding passenger information yep. uh, so that we can make it faster when they come in or when they're going out, advanced passenger information. We're cooperating on that. It actually overlaps between the two of us. So we've gone far on that to cooperate on that. Um, the National Security Advisor read a lot of us, you know, a few weeks ago and said, look, they want to see a way we can develop something like a TSA that we have in America, where you don't see all the agencies looking at you, there, but they are in their different offices in the airports. So when there's a problem, right, regarding a passenger, what they now do is to remove you from the queue and take you to those offices for further processing, but not that they will be holding you there, ask you questions, delaying the queue, putting hands in the bag. No, just one integrated, you know, uh, system Arabian Minister. To, to process you and then take you out of the queue. We are beginning to wrap up now, yes. before then. Yes. Now, there was a time NCE said airlines must not sell tickets in a foreign currency. The Nigerian travelers are still complaining that some of these airlines, foreign airlines, they said they are tickets in foreign currency. What is the Ministry of Aviation doing about that? That's number one. Two, in the course of this conversation, you've referred to consultants, consultants. Who are some of these consultants that the, your ministry is working with? Can we know them? Who are they? 
know, the consultants are say, oh, we are talking to some consultants, some consultants are collaborating No, with no, it's us. going to be a procurement. Are we are not saying they are collaborating with us. We are we want to engage the best consultants across the world. You so have not engaged anyone yet? No, no, no. It's a procurement process. Procurement process means you must advertise. You can't, I don't, I, don't, I can't breach the law to pick my red barrel and say, come and do for us. No. You advertise and then they bid and you look at the best of them. Those who designed the best, some of the best airports in the world have also, that's why I say they are talking to us. They have come and said, look, we want to do this. We need, we can do a very good design for you. But beyond that, they have to also work with our local architects and engineers. So we are putting together a team of local engineers because they know the terrain. They know our soil, uh, this thing. they know our architecture, they know our weather. Because all of this affects architecture and all of that. And then, of course, the concept of airport design changed after 9-11, before it was about aesthetics and all of that. But the new concept of airport design must be security first and safety. And then before you talk about aesthetics. So all of those consultants, well, safety consultants, security consultants, are also coming into that consortium. Like I said, after 9-11, airports changed around the world. It's first safety and security. And then and sale so, of tickets in yeah. foreign currents. Well, it's our position still, you know, that... Yeah, but that, uh, but, I mean, but then NCAA you cannot... The, the, prob the, the problem is that you can't go and micromanage individual customers and their transactions with foreign airlines. We can't... We don't have the capacity to micromanage you for example, you call an airline, I want to buy a ticket. How do we now clamp on you and say we don't do it? So it's tough for us to do individual, to monitor individual cases and their transactions with airlines. You know, and they just... Well, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, for joining us on the morning show. There's so much to talk about. I'll come back. If you give me well, two hours, we'll, well not scratch the surface. The platform is yours. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, welcome. Anytime. And I'm sure Nigerians will always like to listen to you and the other ministers who run away from engaging uh, with the public. So you know, I don't. Please tell your colleagues when we invite I've, them. I've been, I've been facing the camera come. for 30 years. They should stop running away from uh, <laughs> answering questions. <laughs>